Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So we've got eight more episodes before episode 300. And uh, we're gonna go somewhat old school here. Uh, we're gonna do the next eight episodes, sorry, next seven, no, nine episodes till 300. The next eight episodes are gonna be one wine episodes. Uh, there's a, and, and, and this is the episode that will probably take a little bit longer than the others um, to explain why. So. As per my normal uh, personal policy, uh, I won't discuss where I work, but I am transferring from one concept to another concept. It's a fine dining concept um, beginning the week, well, this week, the, the week that you're watching this video. Um, I'll be doing uh, training in another city, and I'll be there for a month. So I'm recording um, as many episodes as I can, which will be eight yeah, because we're on 291. So recording eight episodes uh, today and tomorrow, four today, four tomorrow. Uh, so hopefully I remember to not wear the same shirt for those other four. Um, so uh, so we're doing that and uh, be releasing two videos a week, some weeks, others not, because it's not exactly four weeks until episode 300. Uh, that is February. God, do, I keep doing February. It is April 28th at 7 p.m. Central Time uh, at Max's Wine Dive in San Antonio. Now, if you're gonna be in town, if you're here, if you're one of my local viewers, if you uh, can make it on, it's a Monday night, by the way. If you make it Monday night, um, there's a, I'll, I'll put, click the link below for the Eventbrite um, thing. That one is, you register if you will be in the audience. Okay, don't register on that saying that you're gonna watch it online because I can only have so many people um, in the room that we're gonna use at Max's Wine Dive. They've been very gracious to allow me to use their back room. We are doing it on a Monday night. Monday nights tend to not be very busy for them. Um, their main dining area, main bar area, uh, they'll use for regular walking guests and um, the back room they have, they don't really use on Monday nights and so they're gonna allow me to do it. Um, so I have to limit how many people can be there. I have no idea if I'm gonna fill that room or not, but I have to limit it. And uh, so if you're only gonna watch online, don't register on that, uh, on the Eventbrite site. Uh, if you'd like to say that you're gonna be there in, virtually, then you can go to my Facebook page. Um, if you're one of my Facebook friends, you probably got an invite because I clicked every single box. And if you're a friend of my on my personal account, I clicked all the other boxes. So. Um, the, the event, uh, you can sit there and say you're, you're, you're going to show up. Um, but if you're going to be live and in person, you do need to be there before seven o'clock because we will start broadcasting online on the internet via justin.tv. And I, I don't know if it will stream to YouTube or I think what happens is it will send the video to YouTube. Um, at least that's what I'm supposed to do. I have to check that here in a second. I did some testing for broadcasting purposes. Um, but you can go to my Justin TV account. I'll have a link below also, but it's justin.tv slash 1337wine. Uh, that's my channel. I don't really do a lot of broadcasting. Matter of fact, if you go there, by the time you watch this video, any of my videos I have done are probably gone um, because they're just test videos. I don't really do, I've done a couple, I've done like one or two live stream on Justin TV. Um, I've, I've used other, I used a couple other ones before, but Justin TV allows me to uh, upload in HD. Matter of fact, it was uh, HD 1080p HD, or 1080i actually. So, um, and the video looked outstanding. I mean, it really did. I mean, if you have a lot of movement like I just there, you know, you, you can tell that frames are dropped. Um, but uh, anyway, so that's what's going on. Um, if you're gonna be in the audience, be there 
Uh, the event says starts at 630. That gives 30 minutes for people to show up. I know it's a Monday night and people are maybe at work. So if, if you're not, you know, if, if you're, if you're not in town, it's hard for you to get here by, by 630. Um, I know I have some friends in Austin that are, they're basically taking the day off. They're actually taking the next, they're taking that day and Tuesday off, um, to come down. Um, and it's somewhat of a celebration of getting this new gig. Um, I, like I said, I, don't, I won't say exactly where I'm working because I don't want to be a spokesperson for that, for the company or for the chain, but this is going to be in a fine, more of a fine, it is a fine dining, um, concept. It's going to allow me to, um, really, uh, expand on my wine knowledge, but also, I'll be able to talk to people about wine instead of just talk about people talked about other stuff with my guests and my my staff. Uh, the the place I was at uh, before or currently as of this recording, um, awesome place. And I've told everybody if I wasn't into wine, I would stay there because the company the the chain is an incredible co- uh, chain and the food quality is outstanding. It's just not fine dining, so wine isn't a focus. So that's where I need to be, especially if I'm gonna go advanced. Psalm and possibly master in a few more years, you have to be in that environment that you're surrounded by wine. So, um, and it was no secret that I, I wanted to go into fine dining. I wanted to go to this particular chain at some point. So that's what's happening. Uh, so kind of a, this episode 300 is going to also be somewhat of a celebratory episode. And uh, if you can make it in person, that would be fantastic. Uh, the details are at Eventbrite as far as how much it costs. Um, it does cost money. I'm not, I'm not footing the bill on it. It's reasonable. It's not a lot of money. Um, yeah, you're only going to get three tastes of wine. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's very reasonable. Okay. It's 20 bucks, 20 bucks for three half glasses of wine. I know it seems expensive, but the wine you're going to get is, you know, quality wise is going to be equivalent to what you would have paid. Actually, I think it might even be a little bit cheaper, um, than what you would have paid for those exact three for those three wines, and I have told them that when I come in, uh, since I'm a regular there, but for like a month I'm not going to be there. But um, when I come in, that I won't ask for anything new. So it's going to be stuff that's new to me at Max's. So um, to me, just as much like a regular episode. All right, so let's get going here because uh, I already talked a whole bunch, and let's get right into this first wine. And all the wines I've these these first four episodes, actually five episodes worth of wine, maybe six episodes worth of wine, um, is going to be, yeah, five episodes of wine is going to be, um, I thought about six, anyway, is going to be, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, stuff I bought at HEB, uh, the local major grocery store in San Antonio, and it was at my my actual HEB by, by the house, rather than me going to Central Market, which is the more upscale version of HEB. So, um, and all these wines were pretty reasonable. There was nothing that was like outrageously expensive. Um, and uh, I may have, I don't know if I talked about how I figured this out. So the first, the, the, oh yeah, well the Procrastinate, I had that. That's why I'm a little confused. The Procrastinate Sauvignon Blanc, I bought that because of the, the name. I, one of the other wines you're about to do, I bought because I'd seen it in HEB. I'd seen it around. So I was like, oh, let's check it out. It was like, it looked like a new label I'd never seen before. And there's a good little story about that. Then the rest of these, I kind of was like, I, I don't know what to choose. Not, you know, not for any other reason. I just don't, I was like, I've not seen a lot of these brands. So to me, it was just kind of like, I might as well just blindly pick one. So I found a online n- random number generator on the phone on Google. And I, on the whites, I figured out like an approximate number of how many bottles were in each row. And I just had, had a random number done. And whatever number that was, that was the wine I picked. Oh, uh, yeah, my buddy on Twitter, he, he says that uh, I pour too much wine in there. And I, it makes it look like I'm being, I guess, wasteful or something or whatever. I, I don't tend to be that way. It's just I pour a lot. And the spit bucket, I didn't put it out. It needs to get cleaned out, to be honest, and so I'm going to have to drink these, so I probably should put less wine in there. But anyway, so um, Chevriot, Chevriot, I'm not really sure which one. Uh, It's out of California. It's a 2009 Chardonnay. Bought at HEB, and it was $7.99. 
98 cents originally. Um, it's one of those rest, you know, one of those places, restaurants, one of those grocery stores that if you buy a certain number, in this case, six bottles, you get a discount. So I actually paid 718 for it. Um, so basically a 10% discount for buying uh, more than you know, six bottles at least. Um, so let's talk about who they are. This will be real quick. They're owned by Kendall Jackson. That's about it. From California, it's a Chardonnay. Nothing else. Literally, there is nothing else about this winery. Um, and in, we all know who Kendall Jackson is, so I don't think I really need to go through any history. Um, at least nothing major. If I, I've reviewed some Kendall Jacksons, you can find that there. It's fine on the internet, but basically Kendall Jackson um, uh, was or is one of the most iconic producers of wine in the United States. Okay, so let's check it out. Now I can tell you when I opened this wine, I, I mean, it was already aromatic out of the bottle. Uh, I did chill it a little bit in the fridge. Um, it's not, it's definitely not at serving temperature, but you guys know I don't necessarily um, do these at serving temperature. And on the nose, one of the things that I really get initially is there's, there's kind of a fleshiness to it. You know, there, there's definitely a, a fuzzy, like a fuzziness to it, like like a peach fuzz. Okay. Um, maybe a little bit of, maybe a little bit of peach, but like, um, like this ripeness. Like a ripeness on the fruit. You know, a, a tad bit of, of uh, lemon. I'm not sure how much oak this would have seen on the nose. I don't really get anything major on oak, but considering it's a California Chardonnay made by Kendall Jackson, even if it wasn't made by Kendall Jackson, California Chardonnays tend to have been oaked. But I know K, uh, KJ makes wines that don't see oak also. You know, maybe a bit of apple to it. It's definitely aromatic, but it's it's like kind of just a couple things on it. Let's just get right down to tasting it. It it tastes like a Chardonnay, which I hope so. Um, you know, it, it's. A repeat of, you've got a bit of apple to it. Um, you've got, so it, it probably went through a malolactic. Well, see, if it went through malolactic, I should get more, more creaminess to it. And I don't really get a creaminess to it. So it may not have gone through it. But it's a little bit of apple, a little bit of, a little bit of uh, lemon to it. I don't get like a buttery popcorn uh, type of thing. So the oak treatment may not have been new oak. You know, it, it really, it really is, you know, it's, it's pretty clean. Um, it's a 2009. So we're talking, it's, it's at least four years old. Um, cause it would have been harvested in 2009 in like October or September, and then would have been bottled in 2000 nine maybe or 2010 depending on how much aging it, it got um so and we're in 2014 so it's definitely a four-year-old wine i mean it's pretty decent i mean longtime viewers of the show know that i, I rarely ever put chardonnays on on the show because i don't really ever talk about that Quote, society of anything but Chardonnay, but you kind of like the anything but Chardonnay, anything but Cabernet, anything but Pinot. And actually, I think there's a Facebook group that's like anything but, and like all three of those. And, you know, I, I like finding different wines, and Chardonnay is just, just so much of it. I need to drink more of it. I need to try more of it. But um, it's decent. I, I, I like it. Uh, I've had some Chardonnays, especially from California, I just was not a fan of. 
Um, it, it's it's nothing. It's nothing complex. Um, there, there is a bit of apple. I actually still feel like I get a little bit of peach to it. Um, uh, lemon. Um, acidity is pretty good. I mean, I, I would say it's at least a medium plus. Medium, medium plus. Uh, alcohol is around that medium, medium plus. And I, mean, uh, I didn't look to see how much alcohol was on this thing. They, they love hiding the alcohol. Looks like it's 13 and a half. I got new glasses, by the way. Finally. Honestly, these are too strong for my prescription, so I gotta get, I gotta have to get uh, weaker glasses. But I may have to get those Invisaligns. Yep. But you know, it's a pretty decent Chardonnay. I mean, it, it's it's it smells and tastes like any other eight dollar bottle of Chardonnay. So if you see it, it's it's decent. You're not going to be disappointed by it. You're not gonna you know you're not gonna be expecting you know. Uh, a 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 dollar bottle of shard but you know for what it is you see it you know i don't think there's anything that's distinctive about it but it's you know for eight bucks for eight bucks it's pretty good all right so we're going to move on to um the next wine at the next episode so um i, I kind of forgot i was like i don't i'm not doing three or four in a row i mean in one episode. So, um, I would recommend it. If you like Chardonnay, which almost everybody does, and you're looking for something that's a uh, reasonable price, it's probably widely distributed. I'm sure you can find it in your local grocery store uh, or wine shop. And, um, you know, if you're looking for something around that price point that's pretty decent, I'd, I'd get it. You know, it's not bad. Um, as always, I want to thank everybody for stopping by. Uh, friend me up on the links above. Um, Click the links below as far as uh, information about this and the upcoming episode 300. And um, throw a donation my way um, if, if you got some a uh, few extra ducats. I don't take Bitcoin, by the way. Not that anyone's ever asked. But, you know, everyone's, you know, Bitcoin seems to have been uh, in the news a lot. And I, I've been following Bitcoin for actually almost since the beginning. And, yeah, what am I going to buy with it? Like, like somebody I know said, I, I can't pay my rent with it. You know, I can't go to McDonald's and, and buy anything with Bitcoin. So, and I don't use any merchants that use Bitcoin. So, I like the idea, but it's kind of a kind of a, a, a currency I don't I don't care about. But I do take dollars or whatever you want to send me from Europe or anywhere else. Um, so hit the donation button, and um, yeah, we'll see everybody again next time.